You've had lots of contact with your psychiatrist, haven't you? And I've had some um, with Vicky and... I want to talk about that first of all. Hello, they, they have they had them um, internal meetings. Um, yeah. Which I wasn't part of. Um, I'm frustrated that um, they just don't seem to listen to me. Nobody is addressing the issues of what keeps me in the traumatic circle. Um, trauma, tra tra trauma, and, you know, it's me trying to grab things that are there, like the sanctuary, like women's groups, things like that, and try and focus on moving forward. But my symptoms, my, my trauma, my flashbacks, my nightmares, my, my insecurities, my depression, my anxieties, this is not going away. Let me just try and see what they're trying to do about it. Say so that you feel Dan persecuted, so many different services, it's difficult to keep track of who does what and what you can expect. They also think that your expectations of services may be unrealistic. The only expectations I have of services, if, if somebody if somebody is offer, offer, offer me something, that it actually happens. Yeah. Because it's not happen. That. It's not happen. Okay. okay, now I want to talk a little bit about the, the gender situation. Okay, I'm going back to Laurel's. Right, I was told last time I brought it, I had to wait two, two years to put the application in for the gender recognition certificate. Mm -hmm. So it's two years come now. Um, but when I uh, I have to talk to both my my psychiatrist there and you because to go before the panel, I need my GP and I need the psychiatrist uh, agreement letter. So yeah, is are you happy to do that? I think you should talk to the Laurels first mm -hmm. and go because they they will obviously be, know much more about that than me. But if mm. they're in, if they're saying that the situation is right for you, then yes, I will be yeah. able to confirm and that. The, the second thing, I'm in, I'm in position to go forward for surgery for breast surgery. Yeah, but the surgeon I that I had the consultation with. But you've had she, a consultation. I paid. Yeah, I've had one consultation. Okay. She's now sent me away with two things that was sure she'll require from me. You know, I'm working on my weight loss anyway, and I'm consistently working on that. So that's part one thing. Good. And obviously the second thing would be my GP to say that they're happy for me to go ahead. I don't see any problems with this, Valentine. OK? All right? Mm. So speak to the laurels about both mm. those things. OK, so we've got a plan there. All okay. right? Yeah, OK. 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 All right. Mm. OK. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Okay, bye yeah, bye. Hi there. Oh. Well, about a month ago, I think I came very close to a heart attack. All right. It was as though somebody was hitting me in the chest for about an hour. Mm hmm I had to sit down for an hour, and after that, I was still shaking for about two hours. Oh, gosh. And I suppose you heard about the fire. I haven't, I haven't really heard about the fire. What? Well, our next door neighbours decided to have a burning session next to a wooden fence. And an ember caught on our shed. Our side of the house caught the entire flame because the wind was coming that way. Gosh. We had 80-foot uh, flames and two tenders. Oh. We lost nearly everything. And I suppose you heard about the fire. We lost two cats. Oh, how horrible. What about the rest of the family? Was everybody all right, then? Well, fortunately, most of the other kids were out. Lynn how terrifying. I, yeah, it was. Hmm? I mean, there was just nothing left. Yeah. How are you feeling about everything? Well, I'm still shaky. Mm, I'm not surprised. I mean, I've lost about a stone and a half. Can we help from a health point of view with anything in well, the aftermath after that? Well, Lynn and I both need uh, full prescriptions, please. OK, I'll give you some more medicine. When you say that you were worried that you'd had a heart attack, yeah. what was the pain like? Well, it was like somebody just hit me in, in the chest with right. a fist. And then it stayed for a couple of hours yeah. and then it went away? Yeah. Do you get angina regularly when you walk? I get the odd one if I walk a bit too fast. But... OK, but this was a permanent chest pain that was there all the time. Because you had an echo, yeah. and they said that that all looked normal. I guess one of the challenges here is if it happened a while ago and it's not happened since, what do we do about that? It's probably worth us repeating your ECG and the blood test, just yeah. to double-check, because if it was positive, it would change what we did. Yeah. 
But otherwise, I wouldn't want to say what had happened at that point with certainty. Yeah. What I would say, though, is if you get chest pain like that again, it's really important that you call an ambulance, because it could be a heart attack, and that might be something really serious. <laughs> Obviously, that could be fatal if you had an ongoing heart attack that you didn't do anything about. Let's have a look, then. My blood pressure's lovely and normal today. Just listen in here. Your oxygen level is OK and the pulse is OK and everything else seems normal. All right. And then I'll see you in a couple of weeks to follow up. All right, lovely. Thanks All right. right. Thank you very much. Bye, then. Bye. Right, what can I do for you? Um, stress out from work. Right. Um, I did ring them this morning, tell them what the problems were, which was a, a long list I give them. I said I just want time out. So uh, I've also been snappy with my wife as well coming home unbearable and and just shaky as well okay. I'm, um, you're not sleeping either are you no i was up at four o'clock this morning which was unusual so how long has this been for a couple uh, of weeks you've been yeah two stressed. weeks i think right okay and what's brought it on do you think stress at work plus when i'm going home I've got to care for my wife as well just getting too much he's near to tears because you, right. well, you can see that aren't you uh, yeah. Okay. And it's OK if you want to cry. Yeah. yeah? Sometimes Just it does us good. Out. When you say you've got to care for your wife, if you've got medical problems... Yeah, I've got very bad arthritis right. in my legs and there's things at home that he has to do for me. And at the moment, you know, stupid things like, I can't get to the shops, we need a loaf of bread. He'll come in and say, oh, we need bread. And okay. the bling goes up. At the moment, because he's snapping at me, yeah. we haven't got that relationship. We've got a very good relationship yeah. that is like, well, what have I done? Okay. I'm stuck at home 24-7, you know, and it's like, isn't it? And I mean, we've had our holidays, not as though you need. I mean, we're only, what, just over a month ago, we were in Portugal, so it's not as though we am. Um, it's not like him normally. If I say, could you do this for me, he does it. And it's, yeah. It makes me feel guilty because he's stressed. Yeah. And it's like. Okay. Okay. So you're under a lot of pressure. Yeah. yeah. At home. And what's the stress at work? Well, it explains to the doctor what you do. I'm a driver carer for adults with learning difficulties. Yeah. Um, I enjoy the job. It's not a problem. But um, they've been. Uh, putting me under a lot of pressure, changing what I'm meant to be doing, um, not informing me, and things like that. Sometimes just things just hit the limit, don't they? So what do you think will help at the moment? Uh, time out, time away, yeah. and just potter about or go yeah. out. Or... Yeah. yeah. Why don't we give you a couple of weeks off work and come back and see me in two weeks to see how things are having had time out? Yeah? OK. So there's a sick note for two weeks. We can always extend it, so don't think you've got to go back in two weeks, OK? Take this to reception um, to book a follow-up appointment with me so then I can follow you up in a couple of weeks, all right? right. OK, things will get better. Right, OK, okay. thank you. No problem. That's it. <sighs> thank you. <sighs> Come on through, Jeffrey. So we had a chat about this yesterday. Yes. Saw you in... Uh, November, December, when you you had this sort of tightening of the foreskin. That's right. But you could get it back, um, and I referred, and it got rejected. Correct. But since that time, it's got worse. Definitely. And what can you do? Can you retract it back to go for not a wee all. or anything like not that? Not at all. There's n there's no retraction at all. Mm -hmm. um, and it's getting a, l a little bit embarrassing because obviously. Um, there's no direction. So does your wee come out yeah, in a... It, does it spray at yeah. all, or...? Yeah. OK. OK. And has there any skin change on the, on the tip of the penis that yeah, you can it, see? Yeah, there's, there's colour change. There's a colour change. Yeah. And what, when did that develop? Well, it's been developing since it hasn't been able to retract. Yeah. Yeah, OK. Can you see what you can retract yourself? Yeah, sure. There's nothing at all. There's a whitish skin change there, though, yeah. isn't there? Yeah, fine. Okay, and let you pop your things on and get dressed. That's okay. 
I think you've dropped a couple of copper pennies there. Oh. Right. Well, obviously it needs sorting out. I think what's going on is something called BXO, which is a kind of skin condition that over time in your sort of age group mm. leads to just the, the tightening of the foreskin, exactly the kind of symptoms you describe. Yeah. And so that needs acting on pretty quickly, actually. I haven't seen a case for a while, actually. <laughs> BXO stands for Balanitis cirrhotica et obliterans, and it causes thickening of the foreskin and depigmentation. This presents with symptoms of poor stream when you're passing urine and pain during intercourse. It's relatively uncommon, we don't see it very often. Medical options are using steroid creams, which sometimes help, but unlikely in cases where they're occurring in older age groups. Usually the definitive treatment is surgery, which is often a circumcision procedure. Does it itch at all? Every now and again, I get that really it itches inside. Yeah. And you can tell that it's quite hard skin at the top end. Try and keep the area dry. The other thing is just to book in for some blood tests. I just want to check your sugar level and a few other bits and pieces because okay. you haven't never really had any blood tests. No. So if you take that along to the treatment room, they'll book you in. Yes. I'll speak and sort out the urology referral again. Yes. See what we can do. But it's obviously it's more urgent now. Yes. Um, Remind me, do you smoke at all? No. You've never smoked? I gave up when I was ten. You gave up when you were ten? Yeah. Should I ask how old you were when you started? <laughs> About eight. Were you just trying it or smoking yeah. proper? No, no. It, my, uh, my friend and I used to go down to Central Park in Plymouth. Right. Because my dad was in the Navy, so there's 60 a day, so there's cigarettes everywhere. It was so freely available. So we used to just go into the park with a pack just... of the ten and, and a bottle of lemonade. Then muck around. And then when I was 10, he decided, Steve decided to drag one down, and I thought, no, nah, I didn't like that. Didn't like it, so, so it put you off up. for life. Yeah, definitely. OK, well, there we go. <laughs> All right, Jeffrey. There's not too many people who say that. No. Um, I'll speak to you a bit later. Brilliant. All right, we'll get that sorted out. Lovely. Day. Thanks very much for that. Brilliant. Take care. Thanks a lot. Bye. Well, I'm very pleased to see that your lung function tests are OK, Sylvia. That's brilliant, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That's and you probably good. got a lecture about stopping smoking to stop problems in the future. But, you yeah. know, you are 74 now, so... <laughs> Am I that age, really? <laughs> Sorry. What I mean is that... No. I know where you're coming from. You're right. How many is it a day? How many cigarettes a day? It's round about 20. 20. Some days I do and some days. Mm. So if we kept it, say, at 15... I am trying now. That would probably wouldn't. help. You could save about three grand a year, then you and Terry could oh, go on a holiday and get I some sunshine. <laughs> I know. That would be better. But your chest X-ray, they said that there may be a little bit of infection at the bottom of the left base here. It's called atelectasis, which isn't quite infection. And what they said is to check your X-ray again in six weeks to see if that's got better. But the other ongoing problem, there is still something in my toilet. With the stool side of things, I think we've covered that a lot. That's been... Your whole gut has been checked. But I passed... Your samples, everything. You've but there the is something attacking my system like a worm, and I think this could be... Yeah. There's nothing attacking your system. It's not imagination, because it's there in my toilet. You know, women wipe themselves, don't they? And yeah, they yeah. fold their paper. That's the only So, what, do you, do you feel itchy down below? Do you feel you've seen any worms? No. No. Um, Yes, I do see see something. It's got a little head on and with a bit of prongs on, like that. I've never passed something as big as that. Well, it was on my toilet paper. You know, if you say the size of a broad bean, mm. that was the size what I've got home in the jar. But because it's in a little honey jar, mm. it's now gone going furry. OK. So I was going to bring it up to you, but it's, it's too embarrassing to bring it up to you. OK. But it's nothing I'm e eating because I don't have broad beans and I haven't had broad yeah. beans for a long time. But the previous stool samples have also been checked and looked at and they've been fine. Well, I, I think what know. might be a better thing, we can do a stool sample, is that if you took a picture of what, what you're describing, 
mm. and bring them into me next time. Yeah. You seem very focused on the gut always. Well, or... Would it be because I had an ulcerated stomach years ago? I didn't. Yeah, no, really not not related no. to any of that. No. There's nothing parasitic or worm-like in your gut that's causing you a problem. Okay. I'm afraid to turn around and say, because before, like with Dr. Jew, he put everything down as a mental issue, mm. which isn't a mental issue. Mm. Apart from sort of looking at the psychological aspect of it, we've also physically checked your gut. Yeah. OK. Um, if it happens again, you've, you can get I've... a stool sample pot from the treatment room and we can check it once again and send it off, as we have done. So for now, don't forget to go along for your chest X-ray that we talked about. Oh, I will. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'll see you back, and we'll go through the results of all of that. Is that okay? Yeah, that's all fine. Right. That's Good. lovely. <laughs> all right. Good. <laughs> so you're finished with me now. Yes. You don't need me anymore. No, that's all right. Thank you. <laughs> Take you. care. And you. See you soon. Bye. 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 It might be just. Oh, it is. I'm getting older. Why don't we talk about that? We'll talk about all your concerns, OK? OK. All right, you've been in the wars? Yeah. All right. That's good pronunciation. Oh, was it? OK. Oh, yeah. well, good. Very oh, good. good. All right, good. That's good. Right, so you were in yesterday... Yeah, I was in yesterday. ..with toe problem. Yeah. And the doctor suggests you go and get it x-rayed. Mm -hmm. Have you had it x-rayed? I went and they, um... ..and they were really busy, and the bloke, uh looked at me and had a look at it quick, and he said, oh, I'll just go and have a look at the x-ray you had two months ago. Um, and he said, yeah, I can't see anything. You're going to have to go back to your doctors. OK, let me have a little look, then, yeah. just to try and see what's going on. Yeah. It was two months ago. Yeah. You were playing American football, mm -hmm. fell over, landed on your big toe. But you had an x-ray at the time, mm -hmm. and you were told, OK, still unable to run or put weight through toe is a PE teacher, so affecting work, obviously. Dr. McLaren examined you yesterday. He yeah. thought it all looked normal and he suggested re x ray to confirm no missed fracture. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah. Okay, Talk all right, which foot are we talking about? Your right this foot. One, yeah. Okay, all right then. Okay, if you want to hop up there and have a look. So this is now, we've just agreed, it is six weeks. Yeah? That's just important because a soft tissue injury, yeah. my pat line is four to six weeks. Yeah. Now yeah. you're not quite at that yet. Mm. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if you've been resting it. I have, yeah. You, OK, so whereabouts now is the pain? If I press in here, it's, like, excruciating. Okay. Right, right underneath there. OK. Am I not pressing hard enough, or is that...? It's, it's like, just where you had it there, like, underneath. Just under here, yeah. So it's a little bit warm, it's a little bit swollen. OK. So how long did you take anti-inflammatories for? Um, probably the first couple of days. OK. Right. Well, I agree with you, it's a little bit... Warm, and it's a little bit red, and it's obviously still sore. So you get your things back on, and let's have a think about what we're going to okay. do. Okay. Okay. All right. So you put your. It's just really, it's just one of these things because sports is my life, and like yeah. okay. I'm sitting at home feeling like I'm getting fat, getting, you know, I'm I'm getting like depressed over okay. it, and I can't right. like. Okay. First thing, you know, is that you know, four to six weeks, you're not quite at that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I would do now is. Take, take anti-inflammatories and then book in to see Dr McLaren in a routine appointment for maybe 10 days, two weeks' time. Okay. See if it's improving. Okay. And then we can take it from there. OK? No problem. Is that all right? Yeah. Sorry. I'm sure, you get some, right. I'm sure you'll get there. Yeah. OK? <laughs> Don't run before you can walk, literally. Right. Yeah. OK? <laughs> thank you okay. so much. OK, all right, then. I hope it settles yeah. down soon. Yeah, all right, thank bye you. Bye-bye. Hi. Get out. So I'm Dr McLaren, it's nice to meet yeah. you both. Yeah. OK. I'm here with Evan regarding a bit of a sort of ongoing problem. OK. Um, Evan's been on antidepressants mm. but hasn't been on them for the last sort of four weeks. Um, so he's gone back to sort of quite heavily with drinking dr and cannabis. smoking. It's only cannabis. OK. I thought, is there any point... OK, I need to be taking the tablets, but if I'm still smoking and I'm still mm. drinking, What's the point of taking the tablets when they're not mm. going to be doing nothing to me? The problems and everything that I had going on seemed like they weren't getting no better. 
you know, it's 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 a difficult situation. He's going away today. Okay. I'm going to go and stay with my brother for a week okay. to get him away from Bristol. But we wanted to see if there could be, you know, I don't know if it's counselling, a drug programme. Mm. Uh, you know, there needs to be something. Yeah. You've mentioned you know. drugs and alcohol yeah. earlier on. Tell me what, what what's going on at the moment there. When I feel low, I'll turn to the drink. Mm. I have, like, a couple of cans. And then where I've had a couple of cans, that makes me feel happier in myself. How much do you think you drink? Only four to five cans. It's not like oh. I won't binge into, like, spirits and yeah. all that. Like, it's just... Lager. Lager, like... OK. And drugs as well, what so... It's only cannabis. I mean, I'm only a cannabis user. I've mm. never touched an other drug. But you've been like that since about since 18. 16. Sort of 17, 18. You know, even though, as a family, we still support him and try to do what we can. We don't know where to go with it anymore. You know, where do we go as a family to try mm. and get him the help and support he needs? What do you think we should do? Give me some sort of help. OK. Did you have any particular type of help that you thought would be, would be useful? I don't know. I, it's hard because I find if, if I'm active and I'm doing stuff, mm -hmm. It takes everything away off my mind. Um, so what happened with Rhodes? Have you got their contact number? Have I got a contact number? For, there? for Rhodes? Um, In terms of support, because it looks like you're looking for a bit of support. Yeah. They actually quite like the call to come from you. Yeah. Because I guess it's... Instead it, of them coming to me. Yeah, so. well, instead of me saying, you have to go and see them, yeah. it shows that that's something you want to do. Yeah. If you yeah. take... Go off take my own back. Ship. Yeah, exactly. Another thing as well, whilst I'm here, is I've run out of my antidepressant tablets. Yeah. What do you think we should do? Because it sounds like you weren't that, weren't that keen to take them. Do you want to try them again? Try it's not else? the antidepressants. It was more of the diazepam that was keeping me... OK. ..happier and more bubblier in a person. Diazepam, I'm quite reluctant to prescribe. The reasons being are it's very addictive mm. and... You, you, I guess you've showed that you've, you've had some difficulty with impulse control and with, yeah. with substances mm. anyway. So I feel like I wouldn't be doing you any favours by giving I you that, more diazepam. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, but we could think about a different antidepressant to see if that might, has more of an effect if you wanted to. I feel like the antidepressants that I was on weren't actually doing nothing. OK. Well, let's try something called sertraline. You've not had that one before? No. OK, if I give you a couple of weeks' worth, and then if when you come back, you... Make an appointment yeah. to see a ring doctor or whatever, yeah. Yeah. I think it's good that you've come in. I think that we do need to make some changes. Yeah. Some of them will come from getting the right support, and some of them are things that you know... I need to do myself, yeah. Okay, okay. Do I Thanks need to sign it and that? No, you just take it no. into the pharmacy. You don't pay because you're on benefits anyway, so... No, right. that's what I mean. Okay. I've got to tick, tick the box Thank and you. sign at the back. Hey, do come in. You all right? No, I'm not really. Uh, what do we need to discuss? It's my memory. OK. I had a roll like with the missus last night. Mm. Or was some stupid thing. And tw 20 minutes later, I didn't know what the roll was about. And she asked me to put uh, to put some in bay. I put it by. Then she asked me then uh, a couple of hours later. Oh, that thing I gave him. Like, where did you put it? Mm. I can't remember where I put it. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's things like that. Is this something that's come on fairly recently? Do you think? Or well, no, has it been I've, going on for a while. I've been going. Uh, you mean for a while? Like, I mean, mm. I told her. I think I've had a previous letter from the hospital where I someone said they were a little bit concerned about your memory. I told a specialist, and uh, yeah. as you know, I've just seen her. <clears throat> and um, she said, uh, your memory loss and, and what you call is probably due to depression. Whereas mm. you worry about your mother's death, mm. you worry about your memory, mm. you know? Well, I do get depressed. So I think there was a there was some concern about your memory before your mother's death, yeah. wasn't there? Actually? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Have we done a memory test with you at all? What was that? 
just a, 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 a test to try and assess actually how bad your memory is. Have we done a check at any stage? No, I am. I, I, I can't remember. I, can't remember I, did. <laughs> I was about to say that. But you said it for me. Okay. Shall we do that today? Yes, yeah, fine. Okay. And then yeah. we'll chat about where we go next. So I'm going to give you a name and an address to remember. Okay. Right. The, the Not name? too long, though. Not too long. John Brown, uh, and he lives in 42 East Street, Bedminster. 42. East Street, Bedminster. OK, give me the whole name. John Brown. Yeah. 42 yeah. East Street, Bedminster. Super. OK, I'm going to ask you that again in a minute. What was that name and address I asked you to remember? Uh, Brown. Mm hmm? Uh, What's his first name? Uh, Brown. East Street. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember the first name. Um, do, do you remember what his address in East Street was? No. No? no. OK. And do you know where East Street is? That's uh, in Bedminster, isn't it? Bedminster. That's right. Is that yeah. OK. Now, without looking at the watch or clock or anything, can you tell me what the date is today? No. 10th. 10th. 10th of what? Of uh, June. Okay, June. and the year? Uh, 2017. Okay, okay. All right, now a little um, drawing exercise here now. Uh, this is a circle. Okay. Yeah. I'd like you to imagine that that is a clock face. Can you put the numbers around the clock face for me? OK. Now, if the time was 10 to 2, where would the hands be? Could you draw the hands in on your clock? 10 to 2. Uh, 10 to 2. OK. OK. That's the end of the memory test. There, there were some gaps in your memory. I mean, obviously, you struggled a bit with the fellow's name at the end. Um, John Brown. Um, oh, John, is it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and you did struggle a bit with the clock, actually. But uh, twelve. One, well, no, no, but, but not putting the numbers around the dial. I don't know if you. Oh, right, well, you mean? Yeah, yeah. That's why you do it like that. Yeah. I would say that means there are some issues with your memory. I mean, it'd be quite good to have a chat with your wife sometime and see how yeah. how how she perceives it. Um, well, she reckons it's uh, close to dementia. I, I, I just go into dementia. Okay. It's stupid, isn't it? Okay. But I'll have a chat with her sometime. What we normally do if people have got problems with their memory is we there's a set of blood tests that we do, which just occasionally help us to know what's going on. Um, uh, we normally get a scan done of the head as well, CT scan of the head. I don't know if you've had a CT scan for your epilepsy at all, have you? I've no. so many tests, I can't remember. And, and it will also be should. useful from an epilepsy point of view as well. So we get that scan done, we get the blood test done. Yeah, I've had, a, again, I've had it, a few fits. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it'll be seen. useful to meet with your wife next time, actually. Book a double appointment and come, come, right. come with right. her. All right. You'll get an appointment through the post for a scan. Thank you. OK. You. And yeah. when, you've, when you've had the scan, give it um, about 10 days and then book an appointment and come with Liz for a double appointment. Right, right. right. OK? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Um, I've got like a, a sort of tremor yeah. in, my, in my left arm. Yeah. That I've had for years. Yeah. And it's kind of, it started seemingly getting a bit worse. So I just went out for food the other day and when I was sort of trying to eat, you know, it's a little bit now, when I was trying to eat, it was really starting to shake quite okay. a bit. Okay. Sometimes, like, it's absolutely fine. Yeah. But other times it's really, I can't really put my finger on what it is that makes it happen. I think it might be possibly tiredness, maybe. So you're 29 now. When yeah. did you first notice it? I generally think I've had it for quite a few years. Yeah. I think, but it was so minor. I never really thought anything of it. But um, I think it's getting a bit worse. You think it's getting a bit worse? And what sort of work do you do? I'm a physio. OK, mm. OK. So yeah. what do you think? <laughs> yeah, I know. So I'm trying to diagnose it myself, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. One of the reasons I'm getting it checked is my mum's got MS. Right. I've got no other symptoms, but I just thought it yes. probably worth flagging it up. Yes. Do you want to just put your arms out like that for me? 
You have got this. It feels like you've got a fine tremor in both. Yeah. But it's m more obvious on, on that side. This is what it is always like. Yeah. But sometimes it really... The other day I was trying to eat some food and it was really like that. And yes. I had to sort of put this hand down and... Yes. It's really noticeable. I do have a shoulder problem on the left side, that's the only thing. Right. The other things in my head of tremor can be from thyroid disorder. We should probably do some bloods and just check that. Okay. Can I get you to just do me one or two little things mm -hmm. just, to, just to look at the cerebellar function? So, hand like this. OK, and now a bit faster. OK, and then the, let's, do it, do it, let's do it the other way around, so that hand down that one. OK. Great, OK. Next thing I want you to do is to touch your nose mm -hmm. and touch my finger. Touch your nose, touch my finger. I can feel it yeah. shaking a bit, maybe that. Okay, yeah, that's bringing it on in there. OK. It's like a sort of juddery. Yeah, OK, that's so that does seem to sort of exaggerate yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. OK, let's see you do that with that one. I would say very slightly, but... Yeah, that's... that's mm. OK, OK. That, that's, that's definitely brought... Yeah. That's, what, that's what it that's feels like. That's what it feels like. like. OK, yeah. OK. And you don't experience that in your legs? No, not that I've ever noticed. Your, your main worry is around MS. I wouldn't even say worry, to no. be honest. There's just slightly increased chances. Yeah. I thought I'd bring it up. So yeah, yeah. 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 So if anything happens in the future, we can sort of say, right, OK, well, it's started then. So if we get some bloods done, and then this, to think about whether we want, want to ask neurology to see you, just to check it out, do you think that you, you would favour that? Uh, yeah, yeah, that sounds like a plan. OK. Then why didn't I just do both those things? And then, as you say, it'll sort of lay it to rest, won't it? Yeah, yeah. Great. Well, OK. Fine. Great. Nice to meet you. See you. Bye, then.